It's been two weeks now since the new Nintendo Switch OLED model was released and we know you're all still wondering, is it worth it or not? We did do an unboxing video when we first picked this bad boy up, but we wanted to spend a little bit of quality time with it and weed out any potential issues before we reported back to you. Unfortunately, we did find a couple of them, so make sure you stick around to find out exactly what they are. It's not all doom and gloom though, so hit that like button and let's start things off on a little bit more of a positive note. You can't talk about the OLED without talking about the OLED. As the name suggests, this is the biggest and most obvious difference. An organic light emitting diode screen is preferable to a liquid crystal display screen in every way. LCDs are lit using one giant backlight that sits behind all of the pixels. This means that individual pixels are essentially just filtering light into different colors, giving you far less saturation and dynamic range. OLED pixels, on the other hand, are individually lit, meaning that the black pixels are essentially turned off. This makes for blacker blacks and consequently gives better contrast. The blacks on an LCD screen are just blocking light and as a result appear greyish. You can check this for yourself by comparing black parts of your screen to a fully powered down system. Even though the OLED screen on the Switch is still 720p, the difference is undeniable. The colours look ridiculously crisp and clear, and the previous version looks almost muddy in comparison. To be honest, it's pretty hard to go back to. Nah, this sucks. This sucks. This sucks. The new screen measures in at a full 7 inches compared to 6.2 for the original Switch or 5.5 for the Switch Lite. While 0.8 inches doesn't seem like a lot, it's actually 12% larger and on a screen of this size that makes a huge difference. OLEDs and LCDs aside, the upgrade in screen size is impressive in its own right and the lack of bezel gives the system a far more modern look. This bigger screen actually lends itself to the first major problem you're going to have with your new Switch. The OLED is a teensy tiny bit bigger than the previous version, which in most cases is a total non-issue. All of your Joy-Cons and docks still work fine here. But what doesn't work fine is many of your accessories. 2.5mm is just enough to void almost all of your grips and custom cases. If you're not into customising the aesthetics of your Switch or you've never used a grip in handheld then this won't be an issue for you. For us though, a grip is an absolute must buy and if you haven't tried one, you should seriously consider it, especially if you value the circulation in your fingers. You can't deny that the Switch isn't exactly the comfiest thing to hold for hours on end. Adding a grip into the mix immediately transforms the feel of the Joy-Cons into that of a Pro Controller. Honestly, once you invest in one of these Switch grips, you'll be kicking yourself that you hadn't done so sooner. Luckily for us, all of the companies that make Switch grips are racing to get out a new version that caters to the OLED model. This is obviously an issue that none of them could have foreseen, but it does mean that we're going to have to spend an extra $30 to $50 in order to get the most out of our Switches. If you are interested in a grip for your Switch, be that the old model, the OLED, or even the Lite, then we'll leave a link in the description below to our favourite company, Satisfy. Their new version actually caters to both the old and new Switches, so it's worth picking that one up if you're still on the fence about the OLED. The audio has also seen its fair share of improvements. The OLED model features custom designed closed speakers. Sound is generated from both the front and the back of loudspeakers and this closed design helps prevent the collision of sound coming from both directions. This makes for far clearer and louder sound. We have heard people say that there's no noticeable difference but we could tell as soon as we turn the new system on. Audio is a far more important aspect of entertainment than most people give it credit for. So having these new, improved, louder, more powerful speakers is such a welcome addition. Mario Kart e! Mario Kart e! The best way to experience these two major improvements is to play in either handheld or tabletop mode, which we feel like the Switch was made for. While the Switch Lite was seemingly the dedicated handheld console, the benefits of the OLED seem to have dethroned it. The Switch Lite is the perfect budget option though, coming in at a full 210 Australian or 150 US dollars cheaper than the OLED. But honestly, if you can, we recommend holding out and saving up for the OLED version 
there are just so many advantages to it. The Switch Lite is considerably smaller, but to be honest, the OLED is just as portable. And who knows, maybe down the track you might want to play your Switch docked, and the Lite just doesn't give you that sort of freedom. It's also far harder to repair drift on a Switch Lite, as we don't have a video on how to do that. No, but seriously, without the removable Joy-Cons, you'd have to send your entire console away for repair, instead of just swapping out your drifty Joy-Cons for another. Another thing that the Switch Lite can't do and the standard model does poorly is tabletop mode. The third main change that Nintendo made to this model is the big, bad, structurally sound kickstand. The standard Switch model's kickstand is a flimsy piece of plastic on the back that'll blow off at the slightest gust of wind. It comes off as more of a novelty rather than a practical piece of equipment. It's not structurally sound, you can't adjust the angle, and there are actually many reports of it simply falling off, never to be seen again. The new kickstand, however, spans the whole width of the console and boasts a pair of strong hinges. These allow it to be angled any way you want from pretty much standing straight up to basically lying flat against the table. The stiffness of these hinges provide a lot of support while there are also these little rubber stoppers on the bottom stopping your system from sliding around on its surface. If there is one thing that the OLED model was made for, it's tabletop mode. Honestly, we'd only ever played this way once before, back when we had one switch between us and we were on holidays. We're not entirely sure how many people choose to play in this mode, but for the sake of this video, we decided to try it out regularly over the past two weeks. And we were actually pleasantly surprised by how much we didn't mind it. That bigger screen makes for the world of difference when huddling around it with more than one person. You're probably here to find out about the OLED's biggest problem as mentioned in the title, so it's about time we share that with you. Among the revisions made to the Switch are the updated power and volume buttons, and it is here where our issues lie. The power button is now oval shaped, supposedly allowing for a better button press. However, we definitely disagree with this. As you can see here, the new button seems to have a lot of wiggle room and wobbles around a bit in its socket. Since the button fits so loosely, once I accidentally only held one side of it down and it got stuck underneath the plastic casing. This made the system think that I was holding it down and it restarted itself, which was super annoying because I was right in the middle of a really hard part in Metroid Dread and I hadn't saved my game in ages, so I lost heaps of progress. The game card slot is also now a lot harder to open. This seems like a little bit of a minor inconvenience when you compare it to Laura's loss of save data and our newfound paranoia about pressing a button, but it is still worth mention. The groove used to flick open the game cartridge is now a lot smaller and can be difficult to pry open, especially if you're a nail biter. Even Laura had some trouble with her intensely long nails. It's not just the console itself that's had some changes, there have also been some minor updates to the dock. Nothing crazy or anything, it still doesn't support 4K, but word on the street is that the HDMI ports are capable of it and you can also update the dock so it might not be such wishful thinking anymore. Apart from the obvious aesthetic changes and the larger cord hole, the back is now completely removable instead of being hinged like the old one. One of the two USB ports on the inside has now been replaced by a LAN port, which is an exciting addition for online players for games such as Smash Brothers, making fast-paced competitive gameplay that much more viable. So is the Switch OLED worth it for you? It's a pretty subjective question and it depends on how you play. If you mainly play in handheld or tabletop modes, then it is 100% worth the upgrade. But if you're one of those players who hardly removes their Switch from the dock, then there are no real upgrades here besides aesthetic ones and the LAN port. And even then you could just buy a USB LAN adapter. While this new revision does offer quite the substantial upgrade in terms of visuals, if you already own the regular Nintendo Switch, then it's probably not worth the 350 US dollars or 540 Australian dollars it costs to upgrade. Unless of course you just want to or you're out to catch them all. If you only own a Switch Lite, then we're pretty confident that the changes are going to blow you away. It's a pretty substantial upgrade and we think that it would be entirely worth it to you. Just ask our friends over at Cozy Games Corner, link to their Instagram down below. The third possible scenario is that you don't own a Switch at all yet. If this is the case, it's an absolute no-brainer. Definitely go for the OLED model. It's 100% worth that $50 price increase. In fact, if the standard Switch model sells anything now, we'd be pretty surprised. 
So let us know what you think of the OLED down below. Are you going to get one? And if you already have one, do you have the same problems with the power button as we do? We don't usually mention this, but it would be awesome if you could go check us out on Twitch and Twitter as well. Links to all of our social medias in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.